Welcome to the guitar channel. I am super happy to welcome you a new interview. I am with the one and only Bruno Petitbacher. Bruno, how are you doing today in Paris, France? Very well, thank you. And uh, it's, it's funny to speak English now because yeah. we are in Paris, yeah. France, and we are both French. And uh, we are, yeah, French, both of us. <laughs> and uh, maybe I should use my uh, very good French accent. <laughs> no, no, that I am the guy oh, okay, with okay, the okay. funny French yeah. accent. So okay. you are supposed to. Speak yeah, but I don't want to show up, try to show off. And it <laughs> 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 you know, okay, I've been living in the U.S. for thirty some years now, so yeah. it's really. Al nature, almost, right? almost my native language, mm. you know, for, and, and actually for, uh, as far as musical vocabulary, it's a lot easier sometimes for me to speak in English, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes translating the, the, the words into French, I either try too hard to find out that it's the same word, yeah. you know, like uh, voicing, for instance, or voice leading, or uh, uh, backing tracks, backing tracks, yeah. right? or uh, what's another one that I always miss? Um, Mm. Uh, no, no. Anyway, so, there you go. Mm. Okay. <laughs> anyway, anyway. So I'm super happy to have you here because I think it is the very first time we are um, uh, speaking both of us uh, at the same time in front of the camera, and you have been uh, you have been my uh, official jazz advisor for the last two or three years on the Guitar Channel, and mm -hmm. I thank you a lot uh, for that because it is thanks uh, to you that I was able to. He do interviews with uh, Gilad Exelman, uh, Jonathan Kreisberg, mm -hmm. Nier Felder, uh, Mike Moreno, and a uh, couple of uh, incredible uh, jazz guitar players. So thank you very mm -hmm. much for You're that. Welcome. And uh, you did some very cool uh, jazz uh, chronicle too. So you are a guitar teacher then? I am a guitar teacher, yes. I'm a guitar player, first of all, because mm -hmm. sometimes when I think about it, you know, I don't think that I went to school so that I could teach other okay. people. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I went to school, I spent a lot of time learning and working, practicing and so forth, but it's essentially for myself at first, right? You want, I, want, I wanted to become a good player, so I worked and, and so on, went to school, et cetera, et cetera. But then, of course, there's the, the teaching element, which is also very important. And one thing I did notice very early mm -hmm. in the game was that it really helps you as a student to teach, mm. you know, the presenting material to other people makes you think mm. about it, mm. you know, it how are you going to present it, right, clearer, right, uh, because mm. there are a lot of things we do um, naturally, mm. you know, you don't always think, I and mean, in particular, the, the jazz, by definition, is something that should remain spontaneous mm. and, uh, and um, in the moment, and it's sometimes difficult to to uh, to explain what what we what we do, you know. Even though we may have learned a certain way, but it really is an oral tradition. So you listen to other people play, you imitate what they do, and uh, and then you do it. And if somebody asks you, but what is this, or how did you get to that point, or, or why does this work, and so forth, so it kind of forces you at times to to research, you know for yourself obviously but also so that you can present things to another student and then also having taught for for a number of years now um, I have often uh, changed the way I would present the same material mm -hmm. you know some some things depending were, on the students or depending, depending on, on the students sure not everybody will be receiving the same information the same way but also because after presenting something uh, in, uh, in several ways, I realized, well, this way works better than mm -hmm. that way. Okay. Or I, it'd be better, you know, it's better if I don't talk about this because it will open another can of worms. And mm -hmm. then or it could be confusing, even though it may have seemed obvious to me at first, it could mm -hmm. be confusing to, to, the, to the students. So I always try to find the, the, the better way to, to present the same mm -hmm. material. And, you know... Uh, I mean, there are a lot of books, a lot of teachers out there, a lot of videos, and everybody has their own way, even mm. though the material itself is often the same. And what makes you a special guitar teacher? What is your secret sauce? <laughs> Whoa. Um, well, I don't know what if I have a secret. To get okay, to I think, you. okay, here, here's a, one thing I could, I could, uh, I could say. Uh, I've been a student myself, mm. and I've been a bad guitar player. I mean, okay. I'm still, a, <laughs> <laughs> still working on it, right? So work in progress. <laughs> Sure. But, but basically, I am still able to put myself in the shoes of the poor guy who just cannot play. Mm -hmm. Or the poor guy who just doesn't know where the notes are on the fretboard. Mm -hmm. The poor guy who doesn't know the names of the notes in this key or that key. Or, okay. you know, so, 
it's important for me to, to, to remember that, mm. you know, it wasn't that long ago that I really didn't know anything, <laughs> right? And um, so I am able to, to be patient and also just hopefully present what I'm trying to present in a, in a, in a s simple way. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I've taken a few lessons out there from great players, but some of them were not very good teachers. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. they, they were amazing and, and very often just sitting in the room with them was already the lesson. Yeah, you know, okay. and, you, you know, we, I could record the stuff, you know, the lesson, and then listen back and try to figure out what they were doing. But they, could, they just could not verbalize mm -hmm. what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Yet they were, some of them were amazing players, mm -hmm. but they're just not good educators. Mm -hmm. So I think, again, w what m might make me different from, from other, uh, other instructors out there is that, again, I remember what it's like to just not really know what, what we have mm -hmm. here and, okay. and find the steps. Yeah. So you are available for face-to-face -face, um, lessons and Skype lessons, right? Right. I uh, well, I'm based in San Francisco, yeah. um, so when students are in the area, yeah. obviously I will encourage them to meet me in person because mm -hmm. you know it, it's always better. But for international students, you know, I have students in Canada, I have students in Europe, you know, all over France. In Italy, Germany, Belgium, you know, like different China, even mm -hmm. uh, a couple of them. So obviously, those people you teach in Chinese too. <laughs> <laughs> so French and it, English. It, it may sound like Chinese to yeah. them at times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's in English. So okay. it's uh, the lessons will be either in in French, which I still remember how mm -hmm. to uh, how to speak, um, <laughs> or in English. Um, so yes, Skype, but uh, you know, it's it's a Skype lesson is a little different. You know, it's mm -hmm. not it's not um, in a way it's not the same. It's not the real deal in the sense that it's it's you do you don't really uh, communicate with your student the same way. Um, so your typical Skype lesson uh, will be uh, me demonstrating certain concepts. Mm -hmm. So I try to have a conversation with the student ahead of time. We discuss what they would like to study, or I try to assess what they need to study, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I'll send them some materials, okay. you know, some PDFs over uh, over the uh, you know email, mm -hmm. and then I'll uh, I'll just demonstrate or you know explain what the, those PDFs are. So they could be studies, they could be um, um, arrangements of songs, uh, concepts for improvisations, mm -hmm. uh, you know, etc. This a vast uh, number of things that can be done but again I, I do send immediately be right before the lesson I usually try not to send it too early because I don't really want them to look at it okay. ahead of time okay not mm -hmm. that they're not that I'm afraid that they're not gonna pay for it but just simply <laughs> simply because it's easier if I explain right away mm -hmm. instead of them trying to figure things out on their own and they they might get the wrong idea mm. um, but tell me I mean nowadays on the internet there are so many uh, free teaching uh, resources, uh, uh, tutorial uh, on YouTube, all over the place. Um, uh, what kind of value do uh, your students get from your teaching? Well, I think the first thing they get is a personalized mm -hmm. lesson. You know, um, very often a student has the wrong idea of what they need to learn. Okay. You mm -hmm. know, uh, um, to give you a typical example, somebody might and this is, this is true for real lessons or internet lessons, mm -hmm. whatever, your typical lesson, the students, student will say, oh, I'd like to learn to improvise better. Yeah, you know, that's sure. like the number mm -hmm. one question. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes to me because they want to improvise better, right? So um, we meet, we play. Now, usually, typically, I'll have, if the student already can play, some mm -hmm. tunes, okay, would, would you like to play? Let's play a tune. And, you know, I play some chords for them and they improvise a little bit so I get an idea of what kind of vocabulary yeah. they have. Mm -hmm. And then I say, okay, now you go, go ahead and take the chords and then I'll play. And I cannot tell you how many times, <laughs> boom, they crash because they cannot, so many of them, they can somewhat improvise, mm -hmm. right? Or pretend to, I mean, keep their place and so on. And then when they have to play three chords in a row in time, they either lose the form, their time is just totally out to lunch, yeah. or they just don't know or they will play the same chords over and over and over and over they just don't have enough of the chordal vocabulary mm. and so on so what I try to do is balance out say okay well sure we can work on those more sophisticated concepts for improvisation but let's 
have a little review about chords or how about you play those kind of chords or have you ever thought about those kind of voicings mm -hmm. with maybe a uh, different bass note or different um, uh, you know chord substitutions or uh, or chord inversions or and so on mm -hmm. so but they don't say okay but yeah yeah but I just want to play the solo I don't care about chords. sure well I try, right? I try to be diplomatic okay. of course I mean uh -huh. uh, I mean if I want to keep them as students, I you know still need to sh yeah. to teach them what they think they mm -hmm. want to learn. So I, again, I try to balance it out. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's mm -hmm. that's uh, again that's the personal uh, um, attention that w a student will get from a decent instructor. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the instructor should be able to adapt to the student, assess what the student needs to to do. I mean, there are a lot of variables. Um, not everybody wants to become a professional player. Yeah. You know, I have, mm -hmm. I mean, I do have people who play with their own groups out there. I have also um, very often students who are getting ready to go to music school, mm -hmm. you know, say, so, oh, they're going to go to Berkeley uh, next year. So they want to, you know, get their playing up, up to a certain level mm -hmm. before they actually go to school. Okay. But I also have, um, you know, semi-retired -retire people, you know, people who are, you know, in their 60s and they just play a little bit <clears throat> or you know some people have a lot of time to practice other people don't you know mm -hmm. somebody will have you know 15 minutes every other day and that's all they can put in yeah. well I'm not gonna give them the same amount of work that mm -hmm. I would give to someone who who's telling me they want to become a pro and go to music school mm -hmm. I'll be much much harder mm -hmm. on them mm -hmm. you know that's my my job to mm -hmm. just prepare them and how do you explain that the work they're going to do on the chords is going to help them being a better improviser because that's usually the trick, right? Uh, if you know yeah, what's going on yeah. in the rhythm, maybe the rhythm part, you're going to be a better improviser. Right. Well, there, there are several good reasons. One, one good reason is if you, if you work on playing the chords uh, to a, any, any standard, you will internalize the chord progression much better than if you just listen to it on the mm -hmm. backing track. You know, being responsible for playing the the chords you know if it's if it's a, a b flat blues you know that okay the first chord is b flat seven then you're going to go to a e flat seven back to b flat then a little two five um f minor to b flat etc mm -hmm. so it forces you to think about what chords you're playing it also forces you to be able to play them in time so we're talking the timing is essential you know you're not going to hesitate or speed up or mm. you know, rush or, mm. or drag, lose the beat, slower. Or, yeah. lose the beat, lose the form. Mm. Um, and then harmonically, if you are generating the chords uh, yourself, you somehow absorb them much mm. better. And really, before you can play any jazz standard in time with decent chords, you're gonna have to practice for a while. Mm. And all the time you spend doing that, you, by the time you're trying to improvise, you're already, it's like, it's almost like, you know, half the battle is done because you already yeah, internalized the chords. Maybe, right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Think of it as an investment. Yeah. So there's that. And then also the, the, the reality of nowadays, your typical jazz player is hired in a band to play actually more chords than soloing. Mm -hmm. And that's something that one of my teachers told me a long time ago. He said, look, as a guitar player, if you play in any band, You'll, you'll be playing, I forget the percentage you gave me, but something like 70, 80% of the time, you'll be playing chords. Yeah, yeah. Because there's gonna be a sax player or a singer or you know somebody else soloing, and you're just gonna have to play the chords. Mm. And also for economic reasons, nowadays a lot of times, um, there's only one chordal instrument mm. in the band. So say there's, there's a singer hiring uh, a small group to play in a restaurant. Well, she might get a bass player and a guitar player. And her mm. so it's really you you know in charge of everything I mean she doesn't have a big budget it'll be just you the guitar and mm. her mm. right so you better be good at chords because you want to be supportive if it's a singer you don't want to you know lose them and they need to hear something steady yeah, behind yeah. so you have to learn the chords and then when it's <laughs> going to be your time to solo well you're going to have to throw in some chords and some melodic lines you know interwoven but you know it's you do everything mm. right and there's a big um, there's a bit, and I was something also uh, we didn't discuss earlier was uh, you know like some guitars there's always that little switch there's like the the bridge pickup versus the neck yeah. pickup right I forget which one but one of them says rhythm 
It's usually the neck pickup with them, yeah. Right, and the other one uh, says uh, what treble or lead or whatever, yeah, something or like. Solo or, yeah, or lead. I think, I think it's, it's lead, lead, right? Yeah, lead. Either yeah. lead or yeah. or treble. What? Yeah. Anyway, so it's almost like oh, you function in the mode of playing the chords, mm -hmm. or you function in the modes of playing the single notes. Mm -hmm. Whereas your your typical jazz player will just navigate between the two. Naturally. You know, yeah. naturally. Mm -hmm. So there's not as clear function between the, mm -hmm. the two. Tell me about the studies we can buy from your website, brunojazz.com. Right. So, yeah, there's, there are several studies that I'm selling for pittance um, <laughs> on there. <laughs> Might as well say it. Uh, what they are, they're, they're simply arrangements. Okay. Right. So uh, there's a number of standards. Um, typical jazz standards like um, Autumn Leaves or Blues Progressions or um, Night and Day, Bye Bye Blackbird, and you know, there's a long list of standards. And I, I'm providing arrangements. So there, there are chord studies in the sense that uh, I'm not telling you what chords to play, I'm going beyond that and telling you how to play those chords. Mm. Yeah, so, because the chords we can get for free we right, so if you search and we will have the chords. Right, right, or the real book. If you have a yeah, real book, yeah, you just yeah. open up the page to whatever you want to, whatever song you're trying to play, and, uh, and you have the chords, right? Mm -hmm. So if you take Autumn Leaves the, um, in G minor, your, your first chord is going to be C minor 7, your second chord is going to be F7, and your next chord is going to be B flat major 7, right? So if I play uh, if I play this C minor seven here, well, I'm not going to play this F seven followed by this uh, B flat major seven. They're Why? all very good because chords. It's, it's too far. I couldn't uh, hear. Too far apart, or? Uh, what's the first one? It was it. So w there's no bass line. But if I those are the bass notes, right? So those chords are more fluid you know and because the top note is not traveling very far so i have my f my c minor seven on the f7 i'm using the same note on top mm -hmm. and then for my b flat major i'm going down the whole step with this bass note like right uh, whereas if i go here and then uh here those are nice chords but i'm hearing a melody it's almost like i'm hearing a harmonized melody which could be um, problematic for someone trying to improvise over that. Okay. It's almost like you're talking at the same time that mm -hmm. someone is, is trying to play. Okay. They're trying to say something with their solo mm -hmm. and you want to be supportive but mm -hmm. you don't want to talk at the same time. You don't want to be in the way. Okay. Right? So I always make sure that the top note of all my chords um, is close to the next chord and the next chord and so mm. forth. So. If I play, I don't know, like C minor seven to F minor, I mean to F seven to B flat um, to E flat, and then A half diminished D seven G minor. So I I move very slowly. The top note, if I hear, I'm not going to do the same thing because I don't remember exactly what I did. But See, I'm singing the, the top note of all those chords because that's what's driving me. That's what leading me. That's how I make the decisions of playing the chords I just played. Nice. Um, so it's, it will become easier and easier if you know a lot of inversions, if you know a lot of, you know, uh, I played a few diminished chords in place of the, the dominance, for instance, you know, some substitutions. And I'm providing some pre-written arrangements, so they all are written in diagram form, so if you don't know how to read uh, traditional notation, you can mm -hmm. still use those diagrams, um, you know, the typical songbook type diagrams with, you know, the, the fingerings, little mm -hmm. dots, and then you can see. Anyway, there are plenty of examples on my website, so you can see for yourself if it's something that you can use. Yeah, and you also post uh, very regularly some blog posts, right, articles? Um, I have, yeah, I have a whole section on my website with uh, various essays and articles and and uh, rants, you know, <laughs> and so more like, so uh, about various topics. So mm. it's about, you know, often they're like, you know, miniature lessons uh, about certain scales, chords, or there's some of them have videos, some of them has uh, uh, PDFs that you can just uh, use, download and use, uh, um, different ways or things that, you know, happen on the bandstand, you know, what, uh, 
what are you supposed to talk about when you're on the bandstand or is it okay to do this is it okay to do that things about the guitar things about a few players and, and so on mm. so uh, random actually it's called various thoughts mm. you know, but they're random topics about you know what I do it's all guitar and improv excellent right Bruno, it was great to be able to have you here at the worldwide headquarters of the Guitar Challenge. My, my pleasure, <laughs> my pleasure. Thank you very much for all you do uh, for us, uh, backstagers on the Guitar Channel, providing some very cool uh, chronicle. And so if you want to get better at jazz, if you want to put some jazz in your guitar playing, please uh, check out uh, Bruno, he's uh, great. All right, right, great, thank you. And just, just contact me uh, if you have any questions or or uh, any ideas for what, uh, what you think you would like to, to discuss or me, for me to discuss, just go ahead. Excellent. Right. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Au revoir. Thanks. Au revoir. <laughs>